Welcome to the Innovation Today podcast, where we speak with today's technology leaders about how they're innovating to stay ahead of changing industry dynamics and reaching new levels of productivity and automation. Brought to you by ServiceNow, your partner in digital transformation. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of the Innovation Today podcast. I'm your host, Jim Vanover, Field Innovation Officer at ServiceNow. Today, I'm excited to welcome Jeff Hauge, Financial Services Leader at Agile. Welcome, Jeff. Well, thanks, Jim. It's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, very excited about the topic and uh, happy to dig into it. Me too. So, Jeff, well, let's just start off uh, by uh, hearing a little bit about you and your role. Well, I've been very fortunate. I've had the opportunity to work on both sides of the desk. I was a former CISO at Santander, as well as spending a bulk of my career in the cybersecurity space, working at a number of other consultancies. Uh, Particularly, I spent most of my career working in financial services. My particular role today, leading financial services here at Agile uh, in our CRS practice, that's the cybersecurity risk practice. I have the opportunity to work with our clients as they deal with complex challenges, migrating workloads to the cloud, looking on how to prepare and address new mandates that may be coming from our policymakers, as well as adopting new and emerging technologies, uh, topics such as uh, artificial intelligence. So you, I know that risk is a big topic for you. It's, it's, it's your top priority. It's something that you, you talk about often. Can you share with us a little bit about the conversations you're having today with customers, partners, prospects? Certainly. Uh, what we're seeing today in the industry, uh, certainly kicking up a lot of dust, is the Operational Resiliency Act. You know, a, a lot of our colleagues over in the EU are looking at tighter enforcement around how they deal with third parties, their incident response capabilities, and understanding uh, their concentration risk in their industry and, and the partners that they work with. So what's keeping them up at night then? Well, I think certainly the financial penalties are, are one of the big drivers. The other is really understanding how they're going to demonstrate compliance within their organization as well as to the supervisors that might be looking for the definition in their program and how they're monitoring and providing the oversight. So when it comes to risk and compliance, working together, understanding the mandates, et cetera, what do you see the organizations, what do you see that them they're doing well? For the organizations that are doing this well, I think they're taking the perspective that, you know, these are existing controls that they've already embedded in their frameworks, and it's really how to extend those with the right level of granularity. So uh, as an example, that might be if there's an incident response timeline that gets compressed that now I need to notify a supervisor instead of 24 hours, it's eight hours that I've adjusted my uh, policies and controls accordingly. Uh, so those, those are the ones that are looking at this as this, this isn't necessarily something net new. This is really refining what I have today. So I'm glad you brought up the policymaker aspects because that leads us right into what policymakers right now are so focused on, of course, is around the topic of artificial intelligence. I mean, it's inevitable that those mandates are coming. So what should I, what should leadership, what should companies be doing now to get ahead of that? So I'll answer that in two ways. Uh, One is, you know, what's the guidance out there available to myself today? And so organizations such as NIST and ISO have been releasing a a number of publications around artificial intelligence. A lot of times those best practices will get incorporated into the policies. There's other organizations such as uh, MITRE as well as OWASP that are uh, investing and providing capabilities to look at vulnerabilities in the artificial intelligence space, large language models, uh, things of that sort. Uh, The other is taking the perspective of the organization itself. So how will artificial intelligence enable my team dealing with the threats that are in the environment? The other lens I would look at it from is how will my business partners, whether I'm in financial services or medical Certainly, we're going to see a lot of innovation coming in those areas, and what will they be looking to uh, adopt as part of their solution suite? And then the last lens I would look at it from is uh, how are my adversaries looking to adopt artificial intelligence as part of their tool set? 
So you've been a CISO, so I want to double click into you. You started to get into this, but I want to ask you specifically as a CISO, as a as having sat in the seat, if you were in that seat again today, what questions would you be asking yourself around artificial intelligence? Oh, great question. I think one of the first questions I would start looking at is, where is my business today? Have they already, I hate to say it, left without me? Right. Are they embarking on initiatives that I don't have line of sight to that I should be part of and that I should bring my team with me? The other is, uh, what are the skills, competencies that I need to adequately enable our business partners and understand the technology? Uh, Again, it's not necessarily introducing new controls, but it's really coming down to the application of those controls in those environments. And, you know, with a lot of new emerging technologies, how we looked at uh, the capabilities and how we deployed them may look quite different in the hyperscalers and the solutions that they have today. My own personal user account may be used on behalf of a service that's out there And so that's kind of a different control model that I might not have the level of transparency, at least, you know, intuitively to understand how this is being deployed. So I want to I want to poke your brain a little bit about I. So in the chief innovation office for for ServiceNow, we are constantly looking five, eight, 10 years into the future. But we don't we're not typically in the in the security and risk side of it. So with you as an expert here, would you mind giving us a little bit of, you know, what what thoughts go through your brain when you're falling asleep? What what is what is five, eight plus years look like? It, it's certainly hard to see that far down the road, sure, especially with AI. I, I saw an interesting article anecdote from Warren Buffett yesterday at his annual shareholder conference. You know, just the comparison that he used of artificial intelligence to our release of nuclear weapons, um, you know, that it's partially out of the bag so far, I think is uh, pretty telling that this is going to play a major impact in what we're dealing with for decades to come. I think that uh, uh, when we achieve general AI, that, that has a lot of implications to our workforce, to how we conduct business. And so I think we're just now starting to see some of the implications, how it will enable us, as well as what potential harm it could do to us. So do you think that there are significant opportunities within the risk and security space through the these new AI tools? Can we can we use the tools that are a potential risk increase to also defend ourselves? Well, certainly. I think that, you know, the tools that you're seeing, you know, just even as today provide a tremendous interpretation of uh, certain threats that we're dealing with. They can interpret scripts. They can interpret a number of different attacks in a context that will give our first, second line, third line support uh, a, a lot better insight in what options are available. And so whether that goes from you know, having a human in the process in the loop to eventually looking towards, you know, where automation is is owning the decisioning from, you know, the incident of threat occurring uh, all the way to the resolution. I think that's to be seen. But, you know, certainly our technology partners, I think we're paying keen attention to what offerings they're providing and how they're enabling us. So, so yeah, I, I, I think it's a, an exciting landscape to, to look at. Yeah, me too. I agree. Jeff, anything else that you wanted to share with our audience or thoughts you've had? or I, you know, again, I, I think we're not to overuse. I think, the, you know, maybe we live in an interesting times. I think this is kind of a, a turning point, you know, a, a lot of comparisons to the adoption of mobile. Warren Buffett, you know, comparing AI to the nuclear age. I I think this is something that's going to be a hot topic that we're going to be spending a lot of time understanding how it enables us as well as what potential harm can come about it. And that's where I think looking at how we articulate our our risks to the uh, organization, how we control the environment, 
and, and not to slow things down, but to enable our business partners to actually move faster. Right. Take advantage of the opportunity and instead of getting stuck in the mud by the fact that we've got to protect the business. Exactly. That's great. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been, every time I talk to you, it's informative and I learned something. Thanks a lot. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Jim. And thank you to all our listeners. Please subscribe and share if you like what you heard today. And be sure to join us for our next episode.